Pat, if you just watch that report, which is always accurate from David, mm -hmm. you'd get a sense that this guy was a horse's ass who came to see us, and fair enough. But you would have missed the portrait that we got from the president of Colombia today. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I haven't heard a longer speech since the League of Women Voters used to hold presidential campaign debates. That guy went on for an hour. <laughs> I don't know what he was trying to do to cover his tracks for inviting the guy. He's trying to reassure his donor base, which is not terribly happy about the arrival right. of, of that fellow at Columbia. But I, you know, I will say, whatever Chris, it was, he tried to spend. He, he bogarted it the whole time. He was a bigger filibuster than Hillary Clinton. Well, you know, and and Ahmadinejad, what he did, he just played off him beautifully. He said, "Look, in Iran, we don't invite guests and then insult them to their face. And secondly, we generally let the audience decide whether they what." they have to say is they agree or disagree with it and you've sort of insulted the audience and then he moved on I thought he was very effective from his standpoint Chris I think in a number of areas for example the IEDs coming in to Iraq and there are no homosexuals in Iran I find that a little bit hard to believe right. in a number of cases I thought he was very powerful and effective he did not at all deny the Holocaust he said the events occurred in Europe and the Palestinians didn't do it and they're not responsible for it Europe Europeans are this will sit very well in the Middle East secondly he did not you know as he did not deny that as we said IEDs are coming in but he did say that terrorists are being used coming out of Iraq in Iran now this is the Mujahideen e calc which a lot of neoconservatives have said we ought to take off the terrorist list and use against the Iranians. So he was scoring points in his own community, in his country, and frankly, we at MSNBC, we gave him 100 times the audience that Columbia did, and I think we did the right thing. It was riveting television. Let's go to David Weprin, your New York City councilman. Your view of the performances today, I assume you watched the whole darn thing. Well, you know, I, I thought it was pretty outrageous in the first place that um, Ahmadinejad uh, got this type of forum uh, from an institution like Columbia, you know, recognized as uh, one of the uh, great institutions in this country, uh, certainly an outstanding institution right here in the city of New York. And actually, the name in the city of New York uh, is in Columbia's name. And I think it's an outrage that uh, President Bollinger gave him the propaganda forum that he did. Uh, enabling him to um, to basically uh, revision uh, his own his, his statements that he's made before. He totally, uh, you know, use it as a propaganda mode. And uh, I hardly call him a world leader. I'd really refer to him as a world uh, terrorist uh, or a world gangster before I'd call him a world leader. Well, I'm not even sure he's calling the shots in that country. You, mm -hmm. Mr. Weprin, you're a politician. Do you think he really calls the shots in Iran or the mullahs do? Well, you know, there's a lot of people, obviously, that are uh, calling shots, but he's certainly uh, calling the uh, propaganda shots. Okay, uh, let's talk about that very point. The hottest issue of our, of our, of the last century, of course, and the worst case of inhumanity to man, of course, is the Holocaust. I listened carefully to him, and I know you did, sir. Didn't you hear him allow the fact that there was, in fact, a Holocaust? Well, he, 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 his statement today was different than his statement in the past. Right. In the past, he's clearly said that the Holocaust was a hoax. It never existed. Now he's talking about uh, doing more research. Uh, there's no, no but question. No, no, no. Don't, don't. I'm not asking you to agree with him. But didn't you notice that he mm -hmm. said, I'm not denying that there was a Holocaust? I thought I heard that pretty clearly. There's no question that uh, he obviously uh, used this forum for an ability to kind of uh, revision uh, right. Revisionist history and, and really uh, make himself look more acceptable to the American people. Mm -hmm. I would guess that the forum he had last night uh, with Iranian uh, nationals or Iranian Americans, where he would not allow the American media in, uh, I would guess he probably said different things than he yeah. said at Columbia. But, but, but you know, Pat, isn't this going to hurt him back home where he's looking, to, he's trying to be the wildest man in the Middle East, the new Nasser? Uh, isn't it going to hurt him if it looks like he backed down in front of the New York audience? No, I think your point is right, Chris. This guy's not running the show in Iran. The Ayatollah. Tola is and the Supreme Council are running the show and this guy's got him in a lot of trouble and got him very close to a war with the United States. Yeah. I genuinely believe he's coming to this country to try to ease back his image because I don't believe Iran wants an all-out war with the United States of America because there's no doubt we'd be hurt badly in that war yeah. but they'd be smashed and ruined. Well, they don't want a war with Israel either, I don't think. Mr. Well, Weprin, let me ask you about a couple points here. Sure. He did say some things that to a sophisticated metropolitan audience sound ridiculous. What do you think he meant when he said there are no gay people in Iran? Did he mean there's no openly gay community? What could he possibly mean? Well, either he's very ignorant uh, or it was, it was very deliberate uh, in his statement because there's no question that... Uh, 
you know, homosexuality exists everywhere. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, if, if someone's a gay person in Iran, uh, I think the message is it's not a good thing to come out. Uh, yeah, I think they Iran. got a don't ask, don't tell law from the time you're born over in that country. <laughs> but Let, not to make light of this. Let me ask you about a couple of things. I thought, you know, I'm not going to give him credit for anything big time, but he didn't score some interesting points. He said the United States backed Iraq in the mm -hmm. war, the bloody, horrible war with Iran that killed a lot of Iranians. That's going to help him back home, sticking it to us for back in Saddam right. all those years. Mr. Weprin, you know the politics mm -hmm. of this thing. You know, he clearly had his propaganda message to get across. Uh, you know, there's no question that it's been proven that uh, he has been directly linked uh, to killing Americans uh, in Iraq, to supplying, uh, you know, terrorists with right. the uh, with the funding and the activity. His history actually goes back uh, to the hostage crisis in 1979, where hostages have come forward to say that he was clearly uh, one of the captors and one of the uh, people that mistreated Americans back in 1979. Chris, to your point, he said two things. The Western nations invented chemical, biological, and nuclear weapons. The Americans used them on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and they were used on our people in the war against Iraq, where you all supported Iraq against Iran. Now, all those are statements of fact, and they're very, very persuasive in the Arab and Islamic world in making his case. Let me ask you, gentlemen, about human nature. It seems to me that the whole third world case against the first world is that we have humiliated that part of the world, manipulated their governments, used the CIA to put people like the Shah. By the way, the Shah is not from royal blood or anything. They just created that throne for him. The CIA put him in there against a democratically elected fit prime minister. We have exploited that country for its cheap oil. We've taken advantage of that country. And now we say we want justice. Is there not an Iranian case against the United States and the West, Mr. Wepron? Or you say they're dead wrong. The country's just wrong and we're right. Well, it's not a question of uh, right or wrong. You know, th there's no question that, uh, you know, th that they're revising, um, you know, American uh, history and American policy. Th there's no question that we took certain positions at different times in our country, but we did not actively support terrorism. We did not, uh, you know, support. We took over their country, though, didn't we? Didn't well, we put the Shah in power? Wasn't mm -hmm. it uh, Kermit Roosevelt and the CIA that put him in power? No, it was Eisenhower. It was Mosaddegh. Well, Eisenhower was under Mosaddegh was thrown out. Yeah, yeah. Well, but that, uh, Chris, you're, you're exactly right. That. Look, well, there's an Iranian this. case against the West and an American case against Iran. That's why we ought to sit down and put it all on both sides of the table. And I think we do have things that where we disagree profoundly, but we have issues on which we agree. We both. Neither of us wants the Taliban back. Neither of us wants the Sunni Baathist dictatorship back. Neither of us wants an all-out war. Yeah. Those are common interests. We could well get a Sunni dictatorship back in Iraq five days after we leave. Let me ask you, Mr. Wepron, what's your policy toward Iran? What should the United States do to Iran if you were president? Well, um, what would you do if you're commander in chief? Call the shots. What would you do? Well, the first thing I would do is um, look for a way uh, to um, gradually, uh, you know, get our troops out. Obviously, uh, no, Iran, Iran, oh, Iran. I, I would have no public dealings with Iran as much as possible. I would look to uh, defund um, certain anything we do uh, to, that would, that helps Iran. There's no question that Iran right now is probably one of the uh, most dangerous countries. Uh, would you bomb them? Would you bomb them if you're commander in chief? Well, I, w I would be hesitant to bomb anyone unless it was absolutely necessary. But I would do everything economically possible yeah. to uh, to shut them down and to really uh, you know try to do everything we can. Uh, to economic sanctions and any other sanctions we can, uh, short of an all-out war at this yeah. point. Well, I'm very impressed, sir. I've never met you before. I'm impressed, sir. I, I'm sure you're going to go place in New York politics. You seem like a smart guy, and I mean that. I'm not Thank being pandering. It's great because you got to go up against Pat Buchanan. It's not easy, sir. Pat Buchanan, your last thoughts about Iran? Is this going to give this guy something to dine out on because he was abused by uh, the president yeah. of Columbia University? <laughs> I think so. I think those insults are what he's going to use against us. Right. I think. Uh, I think Bollinger. He wants. To, I think he should take Bollinger on the road with him. You know, Thank you. Was, That's what I that think. Bad. No, I think Bollinger was like the Washington Generals and the Globetrotters here. He's a perfect guy to run against. Thank you very much, Pat Buchanan. Thank you, New York City right. Councilman David right. Weprin, and welcome to the show. Coming up.